Hello again, it's Peter from Record Power. Uh, following on to the video we did uh, a short while back on the BS353 pack of blades, which I um, did some cuts on the three quarter size blade, uh, one a uh, three quarter three skip. Um, I'm going to do a few cuts now on the second blade in the in the pack, which is the three eight four skip. Now I'll just show a few cuts on this just to show the versatility of that blade. So I've already fitted it. So this is uh, uh, the three eight, and it's got four teeth in it. So it offers a little bit better finer cut on the so it'll. Uh, slightly better finish than the 3 TPI but uh, it's a narrower blade so it's not as good for doing big large straight cuts but it's uh, like I say a little bit more versatile in that it'll give us um, a few other options to try out. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to do a few little cuts on this bit of spalted beach here and just to show the, 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 the ease of the cut um, and also the finish of the cut. Um, so I'll get that down to quite a fine finish. So I'll get this started first. I'm going to do the bansel first. Hold on, I distract it. And again, I've got a, a decent edge both sides to work up against the fence. And I always cut when I'm doing veneers and cuts like this up against the actual fence. Some people do it outside. Um, I don't find that as comfortable for the process I like it anyway. Again, nice steady feet, right? So I'm keeping my fingers back again, so I don't want to get working over this side, so I just want to keep the material up against the fence. Again, when we come to the end of the cut, just slow down a bit. Just do it again for a and then carry the cut through again. So try and get a decent picture on that. So you can see I'm slightly better on the on the finish of the of the on the job. And this is very thin. You'll notice I've got decent section there and decent section there. So I'm cutting quite accurately and also across the bottom as well. So that's what you can achieve on our 3.8. Um, and that's a 4 TPI. If I use the three, uh, the three tough one, then I'm going to get a coarser finish, but it'll be a, a cut a lot easier. Now again, I could use a 386, which would give me an even better finish for this sort of a, uh, application when I'm cutting here. But I'd have to slow the feed rate down, so just ease it through a little bit. And that, and this is quite dry. If it's a bit a little bit greener, a little bit moisture, and it, it's going to cut a little bit freer as well. So that's something what we can do on that. And this is one I did earlier. If I can get it right, he says, show you the, like the the bookmark effect of the cut. So Nice accurate little finish on a couple of pieces of timber. So that's one application you can do. Now the next one with the same blade is a bowl blank. Um, again this is a bit with something with a bit of a spolt on it so you need the extractor on and ideally with um, something with a spolt on it you could do with uh, a face mask or something. I'm going to put my light on this time, just to work over the top of it. It doesn't want to play games. There you go. And I need to bring the, the tool arm down. So 
so I want to leave enough space that I can see through the actual job and clearly through it. I've got enough room under the guides. Again, stop the bandsaw. When you start off nice and gently to get into the cut. Rotate. Because the bandsaw's weight of cut is all in towards the table, this is quite a safe operation to take out. All you've got to be careful of is when you bring that cut round, keep your fingers out of the way. Because here I might be nice and thick, but at the bottom it could be thinner. So I could have the blade coming out at the bottom. So fingers out of the way. Don't rush the cut. Okay, it's going on a length of the turn, but still no need to rush the cut. And as you once you've done a few, you'll get even better at it. And if you come out the out of the uh, out of the line, you can work back into it. to come to rest. That's a little basic bowl blank done. If you, you can use, if you're a little bit closer on the material, what you can also do is, if you're getting really tight to a curve, um, it's actually come out the cut and then just go back into it again. At the end of the day, it's a bowl blank, so it's going to go on your lathe and you're going to balance it up anyway. So as long as you're in kind of ball back, ballpark figure for it, you're going to be all right, like sort of thing. So a couple of little applications you can do with the 3 8 blade. 3 8 4 TPI. I can rotate that round quite nicely and get a decent finish on there. Not that it's say like that it matters too much because it's going to be cleaned up anyway. But you may have a black applications, you want to do some rain objects, you can get quite a decent finish too. And in most cases I've kept the my uh, marking out on there, so the guidelines. So next one I'm going to do shortly, I'll set the um, quarter inch blade up on there and I'll do a few little cuts on that and I'll catch up with you shortly. So in our final uh, bandsaw blade of the free pack I'm going to use the um, quarter inch blade uh, and this has got six uh, six teeth per inch six skin so and this one it's, a, it's already fitted so I've got a much finer uh, tough pattern on here so I can get a nicer cleaner cut if with the 3 8th uh, the 3 8 blade that I've just used to do the bowl blank so if you imagine I did that with the the 3 8 blade. With the quarter inch blade I'm going to do an even smaller radiuses and also um, uh, more contours so I could use it for coving or something like that. What, it, what I've particularly done this time is I've just got a bit of um, MDF, it could be plywood, whatever, it's thin section and I've just adhered a little pattern on there. Okay it's September so it's um, 
again towards that period anyway we're all going to start thinking about it so a little pattern on there but just to show basically what the blade can do and something like this you just got to look at it and then work out a cut pattern because what I don't want to do is get myself into big cuts and now having to work my way out but if I do a relief cut in there first those cuts are going to be a lot easier and then with this blade I can I can achieve that so I can cut something out of here uh, quite easily um, and say it's it's more ornate uh, so we do those uh, tighter contours so um, so the blades already fitted I've done my tracking and everything else and the guides these are very small blades so you've got to be careful when you set these up as when you're doing the final cut uh, when you're pressing onto the cut the actual teeth don't come into contact with the, the guides so you must be aware of that because once these come into the uh, contact with the guides you're going to lose your edge on that's the same on any blade and then you're going to um, very difficult to maintain a straight cut because um, it always wants to go off to the, the side with the least resistance so get this ready to go I need to bring this down so as I can see through the cut quite easily and not leave a massive amount of blade exposed so you want to be able to see through there get yourself ample light um, you can't get enough really and then just going to have a look at it and work out a little cut pattern for it so I'm going to start at the bottom do a cut in there and I can come around here then and start cutting into these so uh, should make it a little bit easier it's not difficult just keep your fingers with the pressure down the bandsaw blade is cutting into the table again so it's not going to pull it out of my hands or anything else like that it's just keeping your concentration and gently moving around now my table is all nice and clean it's well prepared I've put the, a wax on the table a uh, microcrystalline one so I can I can move the objects around quite easily and um, should be able to achieve the job so we'll start off <laughs>
up. Race will find its own way out. We're going to have to pull it. So a bit of fun, but basically just to show you what you can do with a bandsaw blade. Uh, it's practical up to a point, but it shows you the versatility of the little pack that we've put together um, to try and cover as many sort of uh, projects that uh, you, you guys have. So again, say, so just a little bit of fun, um, but it shows you what you can achieve with a bandsaw. So I did this earlier and I need to cut some more out, I'm, I'm going a bit short. And it's so easy with this type of blade to do some sheet stuff. So I've already set up the size of it, pinch that up. Again, get my bandsaw going first before the extractor. Start straight edge, up to the fence. against the fence. for our free pack. I just thought of that one towards the end. Sorry about that. I'll catch up with you soon. Cheers for now. Bye.